Hi, I'm David Davis from Actual Tech Media. We're here at the Emerging Technology Summit. We're in the U.S. Bank brand new NFL stadium, a really exciting event. I'm proud to be joined by Mr. Andrew Miller. He is a technical marketing manager for Rubrik. How you doing, Andrew? Doing well. Enjoying the, uh, enjoying the convention. Had a bunch of good conversations, a good session. It's, the venue is awesome, like you said. It is. Very it cool. is. Very cool. Yeah. So I know you had a session here, and your session was on ransomware. Um, that's been a very popular topic with us at Actual Tech Media. Every time we do an event, the outpouring, the people just come. They want to learn more about ransomware. Uh, it must be a very serious problem. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your session? Sure. Oh, more than happy to. So the way I usually structure is, while well, I work for Rubrik, I always want to make it fairly educational. So like the first half is just talking about ransomware market and the dynamics and what's been happening, why it's growing. So there's numbers out there around like, you know, 40 to 70 percent of customers are going to get hit every year. There's even some fascinating stuff about the whole dynamics of there's vendors out there making ransomware kits that like kind of channel partners or resellers can buy with different levels of complexity and then they can go and attack people. So that whole vendor partner ecosystem dynamic is playing out there as well. I've heard of it as ransomware as a service Literally. even. You can go it's online and just and just attack someone with ransomware. It's, it's a scary world. Uh, sometimes even, it's a, it's a little bit of a joke, like that 2015, the impact was 25 million to a billion in 2016. So you know, if your career path's not working out and things, this isn't going very well, you, know, you should absolutely get into cybersecurity. That, that's absolutely what I mean. Yes. I don't mean whatever else you were thinking there. So. Right, right. <laughs> so tell us about your session. What, 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 is, uh, what do people need to know when it comes to data protection to protect themselves from this ransomware threat? So the way I usually lay it out is making sure to help educate people about that we are talking about a security conversation, and so it's defense in depth, mm -hmm. um, where you have things that are kind of before the fact education, and then before the fact technology, fire, next generation firewalls, and even before the fact insurance. You can buy ransomware insurance policies, really? interestingly enough. Uh, the, some of them have major caveats that you must have all your patches up to date oh. at the time of the attack. That, that's a big, like, bit of, <laughs> big, small bit of fun for him, if you right. will. And then, of course, we get into um, after the fact, data after the fact protection, which is of course data protection and backup and recovery, and really see the factors that matter there the most. Two factors: one is around reliability of data recovery, like can you get your data back, and then I dig into that. And the other is around speed of data recovery. That if uh, you know if a tree falls in a forest, does it make a sound? No one really wants to make a judgment on that. But if you can't get your data back fast enough to avoid organizational, reputational, financial impact. Do your backups exist? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. actually not a hard answer. It's, it's like a really sad one, but right. it's not a hard answer. And then when I, I dig into those, it's around uh, reliability, it's about simplicity of your solution. If you have to spend a lot of time every single day maintaining something that you only get benefit from on a periodic basis, there's the whole like, you know, out of college I ran back with exec. I'd come in every morning, get my Mountain Dew, I turn into a, my, this uh, graphic I use. I turn to a sad panda because I'd sit down and look at all my failed backup jobs, and uh. and then even stuff around um, immutability, so that you can be sure that if your primary systems are compromised, there's nothing there that can change. Your backups need to be immutable, so that if your primary systems are compromised, new data is backed up. And then we get into speed of data recovery around that's like live mount mounting things uh, directly. And then, uh, and then even APIs, like the scenario I love, well, it's a sad scenario, but I love is when someone got hit by ransomware, five servers, 15,000 files, they didn't want to restore all the servers, but you're not going to do 15,000 clicks. So if you can write a script to find all the .enc files, pipe them in, restore those 15,000 files across five servers, well, that's pretty powerful next generation capabilities in a non-traditional way. So that, that's kind of what I walk through in, in 30 minutes, but condensed into, into two, and I try not to make it too long, right? So, you know, that's the summary. Okay. I mean, you make a great point that protecting yourself from ransomware really has to be defense in depth. It's, it's like the layers of the onion, if you will. Absolutely. Um, and data protection is there to re resolve that or mitigate. It's last resort. It's the last it's resort. So it better be good, <laughs> and it better work, so you, it needs to be tested, and it needs to be high speed. I mean, I remember when I was an IT manager in the data center, man, backups back then were just awful. And Start backup exec and typically storage manager and yeah. not knocking those. They were great for the time, but right. man, that was just... Somebody needed a file, well, I'll get back to you in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I hope it works mm -hmm. kind of thing. And these next generation data protection solutions like Rubrik are... are uh, a whole other world. So why don't you talk a little bit now about Rubrik. What, what makes yeah. Rubrik different? So the, the reason frankly, I walk through and structure the presentation that way as far as architectural principles is that uh, we do believe that Rubrik satisfies 
those principles as well, or frankly, better than other solutions out there. So uh, from a simplicity standpoint, you can stand it up within 30 to 60 minutes. We have customers who literally, uh, it was a previous customer of mine, I architected their last system with a competitor five years ago. It was good then, so I don't, but it's not as it ends now. I mean, he was raving to me about how they're spending 10 to 20, 10 to 20 minutes a day instead of half a day person time maintaining the system, much less the stand up. And, and then of course, as you get into immutability, uh, Rubrik is by default immutable, new backups, can never change previous backups. They're only expired by policy. That's okay. built into the system. Some, some systems can be configured to be immutable. Uh, some can't be, some are by default. The ones that can be configured, usually people don't think about that until it's like the worst time to think about it. That, that, that's really not a, not a good day, right? And then we get over the speed of data recovery that you can live mount virtual machines off of Rubrik. So you can, that's the whole like, can you restore 100 gig VM in 60 seconds? Well, you can't restore it, but if you, what if you could have it up and running and then storage vMotioning off rubric in the background? Well, yeah. application level, that, that's the same thing. And then of course, the, uh, that everything is driven by API. So there, there's usually a couple customer stories that I tell in there, but before I keep going, I'll see if that created any thoughts before I keep going to stories. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned the immutability, and that's is specifically important about ransomware because uh, ransomware comes in and encrypts all your data. Um, and the question remains, well, what about the backups? Can the backups also be held for ransom? So yes. you have no way to recover your data at all, even the last resort. And so that's, that's a great differentiator to me about, about Rubrik. Uh, what else do we need to know about Rubrik? I'll just, I'll, I think I'll just put it in two stories. So um, one is not a Rubrik story, but it's just like, you know, what could happen? So literally I had a SQL DBA, his machine got infected by ransomware. Not a good day. Uh, reached out to the SQL server, encrypted the MDFs and LDFs. It's a worse day. Reached out to a backup appliance, leaving names out, I'm not trying to be harsh competitive, but everything there was read, right? Locked down with permissions. Encrypted the backups. Oh. That's a really bad day. Yeah. So that's to like emphasize the immutability aspect and why it matters so much, because we're seeing real world attacks. Uh, the other one is all just um, a customer at a uh, five server environment. This is a Fortune 100. I've got to, I've got to leave the name out here. Uh, knowing we're on both on tape and even when I'm not, uh, backup uh, VP of infrastructure calls up and says 3:30 on a Friday the environment's down. That's a bad day, especially right. for a director of backup with a distributed backup team. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, they were to call back and say, "Hey, we believe this environment's online. Uh, can you please go check?" DP puts the phone down, uh, goes and checks, comes back. There's a little bit of, uh, shall we say, happy cursing, like, <laughs> like incredulous, like what did you do kind yeah. of thing. Um, because at that point, they'd been able to use live mount from Rubrik, immutability, reliability of backups, not having to monitor them all the time, live mount the virtual machine off Rubrik. It was storage fee motioning back under the covers. But at an application level, mm. it's up and running. So that's the kind of stuff that gets really powerful from a, if you want to approach backup and recovery, Nobody has budget for that stuff. It's not fun and exciting to the business. Right. So even if you just have good goals about enhancing that, you need capabilities that can be more business impactful mm -hmm. to even be able to approach that kind of a project with, with good intentions. So. Very nice, yeah. I, I love the real world stories. And I love hearing about innovative companies that are making um, traditional headaches uh, for IT professionals. Just, just stupid simple, if you will. This makes uh, it fun. When you see, like, <laughs> previous customer, I mean, he would, it was almost embarrassing at uh, our party at Microsoft Ignite River Party. He just almost wouldn't stop talking to prospective customers. And it's like, that's <laughs> awesome. It's like, almost like, dude, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be that excited about it. Right, you know? right. so. Well, very cool. Well, thanks for chatting with me today, Andrew. Appreciate it. Yeah, for more information, of course, visit rubric.com. Thank you.